Does generating high-quality images with AI has to be costly and complicated? Discover Comfy UI, the most powerful and modular stable diffusion GUI and backend. This free open source platform allows you to design and execute advanced stable diffusion pipelines visually with nodes. During this platform overview, we will see how to use it properly to generate good looking images, how to use custom models, and how to create an upscaling workflow using AI. To start using Comfy UI, you can install it locally on your machine by following the installation instructions available on their GitHub repository. You can also install it on a server if you want to create an online product using or providing image generation services. To help you achieve it, you can use a platform like ours, LSTO to take care of the installation on the cloud provider of your choice, but also backups, updates and maintenance. To install Comfy UI on our our platform, head to ls.io and click on login. Then click on deploy my first service. Then head to AI GPU and choose Comfy UI. Select, choose between the different cloud provider, regions and service plan based on your needs. Here you can adjust the number of CPU and RAM. Then click on next. You can choose your name, change the advanced configuration and choose between the different level of support. I will keep the free included one and then create service. Once the installation is finished, access your instance, click on display admin UI, click on this button here to copy the password to your clipboard and follow your admin UI link. Then you will have a prompt to enter your credentials. The username is root and paste the password from your clipboard before clicking sign in. This is where we land when we open it for the first time. It can look scary, but don't worry together. We will dive through and it's very powerful, but you don't have to be scary about it. The first thing we can do before doing anything is just to click on QPrompt and it will run all the nodes one by one. You can see now it's running the case sampler. It will go node by node, perform the task it's meant to do, and it generates this image here. This is what happens when we run the default setup. So what we have here, we have the checkpoint, which is the model, and we have a prompt where you enter the desired output. So you have beautiful scenery, natural glass bottle, landscape, which is what we have, purple galaxy bottle, which is what we have inside the bottle. And there is also a negative prompt to prevent different things we don't want to see in our image. So here it is, we don't want text. So we enter text and we don't want watermark to avoid having it on the image. By doing this, it won't be inside what it generates. Then we have an empty latent image where we define the size of the output image we want with the width and height. Then the case sampler where we plug all our different inputs, the seed for the randomization of what it will generate. Then it goes through a VAE decode then the save image and we can either right click, open the image or save the image, it will save it into our disk. Now if I open my download, Comfy UI and it downloaded the image that we generated. Before trying something else, what we can do is just change the prompt. So I prepared one, anime style, landscape, horizon, sunrise, beach, bird. And then for the negative one, we can say we don't want to see people. So just type people. Then because we want a landscape, we can enter different values for the output size. Let's say 960 by 540. Okay, then let's try it again, Q prompt. Now it's doing the case sampler. And here is our output image. If we look at it, it's a nice landscape. We can see a bird, but it's very small. So let's save it again and see what we have. Here it is, the resolution is not optimal because I'm on a 4K screen display and the image size we put was small, but it's looking pretty nice. The good part is you can try as many prompts as you want because it's on your server, you're not consuming token. And if it's on your own device, it's the same. It's not consuming anything, so you can try, experiment to fine tune to have the good results. So currently we are using that model here, which is the pruned email only and we have other ones we can use so let's use the first one sd excel base and again we will run q prompt and here we have another result let's save the image and this is what we get 
it's another kind of image still representing our prompt. The question is, where do we go from now? We are using the default template and it might seem complicated at first. My very first recommendation is for you to open the Comfy UI examples. I will provide the link in the description of the video. And you have a plethora of examples you can copy and use to know how to create different kind of prompts. And when you learn by copying and doing them, you will be able then to create your own prompts and your own chain of notes. Let's start by using the image to image. We have a description explaining what it is. These are examples demonstrating how to do image to image. If we look here at the workflow, it's loading an image, which doesn't look awesome. And by running it, using the load image and using it as an input for the image generation, then it renders a way higher quality and more realistic image from this basic prompt. You have two solutions to use the image to image. You can load it, clicking here, load, the one that you will download and import it and it will be you will be able to run it here, or we can create it manually. It's what we will do to dive into the platform more. The difference is here. We don't want to use empty LAD and image. So we click here and uh, remove. And then we have different solution. We can right click, add node, and for us, it's a latent and VAE encode. And before it, we need another node, which is image and load image. So you can do like this, but another solution is you double click and you type what you are searching. So image, and it will prompt me different options. And I will use load image. By default, there is the picture of the example. What we need to do is to connect the different nodes. So for image, you will grab it and connect it to pixels. Then the VAE, you will grab it and connect it from the model, which is the checkpoint you have here. And the latent, it's what you will connect here to the case sampler. Let's also change the prompt. Let's say Disney princess, cartoon style, sky, meadow, grass. We can say we don't want watermark and text in the negative prompt. Then we can run Q prompt. If we don't have any error, it's fine. It's going through all the different steps. Now the generating process in the case sampler. And here it is. We have our beautiful image here generated from this, well, not so good looking image. You can see how powerful it is. But let's see something. Here, if we right click, we save the image. I don't know if it will be visible on the video, but it's a bit pixelated. And if we look at why, it's because here, the resolution is 768 by 768, which was the input image we used to generate the output. What we can use Comfy UI 2 is to upscale image. So let's do it from scratch. We will clear the whole workflow, clear it here. Okay. We downloaded the image, so it's fine. We will be able to use it. So first thing we will need is to load the image like we did before. So load image. We take it. We won't use the default one, but the one we created together. Perfect. Here it is. We can grab the node and put it here. We will need another one, which is an upscale. You have different options. The one we will start with is the upscale image. So here it is. And last one will be a save image like we had before. We only have those three nodes. We need to connect them. So image goes to image. Then we can choose the resolution for the final one. So upscale method, you have different options. Let's keep the default one. Let's say we want to resize to 120 and 120. We don't crop it. We drag image to image, or maybe let's make it way bigger, 2000 for each, to be able to appreciate uh, the quality of the upscale. Then Q prompt. It's pretty fast because currently it's not using AI, it's just plain algorithm. Right click, save image. Now, if we compare the two image, we have 768 here, and we have 2000 by 2000 here. But if we look at the image, it is 
pixelated. Even if it's bigger, it's less pixelated, but it's not an upscaling method that enhances the quality of the image. And to be able to enhance the quality, we need to use AI, not only algorithm, even if it's completely doable. So this time we will change the way we render the upscale. So right click, add node, and then it's inside the loaders and load upscale model. So it's the model that we will use to upscale our image. Then double click upscale image. We need to choose the right one. So us, it's upscale image using model, this one. Perfect. So the upscale model is here, the image is here, and the output image goes to save image. We have different upscale model. Again, we'll keep the default one. And then Q prompt. It's down from far, it's difficult to tell. So let's save the image. And now the difference is huge. If we zoom in, it's even less pixelated than it was when it was zoomed out. You can see how sharp it is. It's Terrific. Then, okay, let's say you like this workflow. It's something you want to create a product around because you create software or need it internally for a different process within your business. What you can do is save it. And then because you have your server running, you can perform API requests on it to run your different workflows through API. So you can create your whole software that will run the different workflows you created visually that are using AI to perform huge operations. I will also provide you this link in the description. Then let's say, okay, you are not totally happy with the look of the different image you generate. Currently we have used uh, easy model and also easy prompt. We didn't try a lot, but if you need to find the right recipe, the best is to look at what others have done before. You can click on share and its main purpose is for you to share your different workflow. Let's open Comfy Workflow, for example. And you have this nice gallery of people who are using Comfy UI and they share their different models and how they create image and the output image you can create with those workflow. It's something that exists on different platforms, but sometimes it's on paid platform where you need to buy token. While here, everyone is sharing freely its discovers. You can see on the right different output images and on the left you can download the workflow. And you see here, you see different things with undefined that is written. Let's say we want to run it and let's see why we have undefined. Click on download, download. And then inside your own instance, click on load and open the one that you just downloaded. So here open, and you can see there are a lot of different modules that we don't have on our instance yet. You can click on close and inside manager, which is where you can install different add-ons and different models. You can just click on this button, install missing custom nodes. It will look at all the different models that are used inside your workflow, but you don't have yet. You can check all of them and install them which is perfect. We won't use this, but it was to show you how it works. Let's create a new workflow with the default one. Okay, load default. Let's change the prompt to create something else. Now we want to create person. So let's say beautiful woman, portrait, nature, photorealistic, and then Q prompt. Again, it's the very default prompt we had at the very beginning. And we have this image here. We can right click open image. And we have this. It's not really photorealistic, even if the result is not so bad. Two quick things to enhance it is to change the model. Let's use SDXL and change the width. 1024 by 1024. And then Q prompt. And with just those few changes, we have a better looking result. Let's open the image. It's bigger. It's more looking like a photo. It's not perfect, but we have the atmosphere we wanted. If we are not happy with the fact it's pixelated, we can upscale the image, but you've got the idea. If we want even better looking image, just out of the box with more details or different things, what you can do is change the model we are using. Maybe we have reached the limit of this model. It's at the manager place where we were before, and it's not installed missing, it's 
Model Manager. This is where you are able to install the different modules to use for your workflows. The one we want to change is of type checkpoint. It's the base model. But if you look at the size, it's pretty huge. And for this demo, I don't want to download gigabytes of model, but you can definitely do it here, install, and then they will be available on the left. What we will use instead is called LoRa. Again, in model manager, instead of using the type checkpoint, we'll be using the type LoRa. So these are models that are trained for a specific purpose, which means for rendering here the portrait we want, they will be more accurate and precise for it, still using our checkpoint model. And it results in way smaller size. The one that we will want to use is SDXL lighting. So I found it on a hugging face with a lot of information on what it generates, how it works, and even the workflow we can copy and reuse. You have different variants using two, four, or eight steps. Again, the name of our one is SDXL. So these are those ones. Let's say we will use in the eight step install. It shouldn't be long. Okay, and it's telling me it requires a refresh. A refresh, it's simple, it's just this button. So if we had a LoRa box, it will appear in the list of the model. It's different from a restart of the server when sometimes you install different models. Okay, now we want to add LoRa to enhance our basic model. How do we do this? We have the example here. We can open the image and copy it or load the whole thing. What we need, we have the checkpoint, it's already here. The only, oh, this one is the basic one. So let's go down and here it's the one with LoRa, I guess. Currently it's the one step we want, the eight step, but okay, we will just need to configure it ourselves. So we have the load checkpoint and we will need to add the LoRa. We have seen how to find them easily. LoRa, load LoRa, and we can see here we have our eight step model that we created. Maybe I zoom in if it's not very visible. Perfect, it would be empty if we, I didn't install it just beforehand. Then we need to change our existing one. So we connect the model to LoRa and the clip from the checkpoint to LoRa too. And then what we need to do is to connect LoRa to the case sampler. Then same for the clips, it will be coming from LoRa and not from the checkpoint one. Perfect. Then as we choose the eight step model, we need here to change the number of steps to eight. And in the example, they change this scheduler to SGM uniform. I have no idea about this parameter. Fine. Let's try it. Q prompt. If I don't have error, it's good. Okay, perfect. Let's see what we have. And we have this horrible image. So maybe we need to adjust the parameter. I think they use one in CFG. I don't know what it's about, but let's try again. And it seems it's making the magic I was expecting. Let's save the image and open it. And here is the result we have by using LoRa, which is a very high quality image. Let's try it again. Maybe we can try different parameter. For example, beautiful Asian woman, um, Tokyo, instead of nature, we can type cyberpunk and Q prompt. And awesome, the result is incredible. Let's open the image. We can still upscale it. And here I'm more than happy because we are using the photorealistic term and the image is very looking like an actual photo. And even if this model is specialized, it's still very powerful to generate anything. So let's say pink unicorn, anime style. Let's cue prompt. Awesome. I think we found a good recipe we can iterate from. Thank you for watching. We hope you enjoyed discovering Comfy UI with us. Please hit the like button to help our channel be more visible to other open source lovers. Don't forget to subscribe to not miss our next platform overviews. If you want to continue your open source journey, I recommend you watch this video, available here.